So what is an ABS braking system? What advantages do you get from having ABS on your car? And how does ABS braking systems compare with a professional driver employing a method such as just cadence braking or pulse braking? So in this video, we're going to look at all the different braking methods and options open to you as a driver. And we're just going to discuss how ABS braking actually works, what it is, what it does, and the advantages that having a car with ABS gives to you. It's certainly something we take for granted on modern cars and modern engines, and it really has made a major difference to safety on the roads and enables drivers to just push their cars to the limit a little bit more often and to do it in a completely safe environment. So car braking systems, there's quite a few different types. You might think of the conventional type as a hydraulic braking system. It's hydraulic because it's liquid based. So when you press the brake pedal down, fluid in a pipe is compressed. And because that fluid doesn't compress, it has the effect of moving the pressure on the pedal to the other end where it would operate the calipers and the brake pads, applying them to the brake disc. That extra friction causes the car to slow up and stop. So issues you might get within the hydraulic braking system is if you've got fluid in the brakes itself and the fluid will tend to boil and that can create a spongy feel on the brakes when you actually start to apply them. It's typically something that happens when the brake fluid gets older and also under very, very heavy braking where the brake fluid itself is getting extremely hot. But in the main, the hydraulic system works really, really well. You've also got electronic braking systems where an electric servo controlled motor is used to apply the braking force. And in electric vehicles or hybrids, you often have a regenerative braking system, which recovers kinetic energy from the car through the braking setup, which makes it more economical in the long run. Air brakes are also used. So instead of hydraulic fluid, you're using air pressure, but they're set up in reverse. So when there's a lack of air pressure, there's a leak in the system, the brakes are on. So that's considered safer than having a air brake system that will potentially fail. And they typically use those on HGVs, lorries, and much larger commercial vehicles where you're dealing with carrying a lot of weight around. Then cars have got a backup braking system, the handbrake. So that is typically operated by a cable. As you pull the handbrake, it operates a cable which changes that momentum to the back and applies the rear brake pads to the brake discs. A lot of modern cars are going over to an electronic parking brake system. So ABS or anti-lock braking literally does what it says. It stops the wheels locking up on heavy braking. So we're going to discuss how it does that in a few moments. But um, just for now, it will enable the car to have additional safety features such as traction control and stability control because the car is now able to detect slip conditions on the wheels and make adjustments by applying the brakes. So how does an ABS system actually work? Well, the car is fitted with wheel speed sensors. There's a, a few different designs and varieties, but essentially they monitor the speed of all the wheels. And if one wheel is suddenly slowing up, especially in relation to the other wheels, it detects that that wheel is about to lock up and it can ease off the braking a little bit just to give you a little bit more chance of stopping the car. Because when a brake is locked up, the tire is just skidding over the surface and the braking is substantially reduced. You might think that locked wheels will stop the car more quickly, but in reality, locking that wheel up is disastrous for braking and you just end up skidding much, much further than you would if the brake was applied. You skid much further than you would if the brake was applied more gently and was able to bring the car to a much more controlled stop. So the ABS control unit, this is the brain really. It looks at all the data that's coming in from the wheel speed sensors. So if it detects that there is a problem and the wheel is about to lock up, it signals a hydraulic modulator to reduce the braking pressure that's going to that wheel that is locking up. So the hydraulic modulator does quite a lot of work. It pulses very, very quickly in response to the directions that it's getting and it opens and closes the valve, allowing the brake fluid to get to the callip and operate the brake pad. So the brake pedal is your only real input into the car's braking system. 
And with these modern electronic systems, it's not as directly controlled as maybe it was on an older car that maybe used drum brakes. So most modern ABS systems will give you some kind of feedback to show that the ABS is cutting in. It, it could be a flickering light on the dashboard. It could even be a buzzing sensation through the brake pedal itself. But generally, no matter how hard you press the brake pedal in a car with ABS, those wheels will not lock up. The car's ABS control system will kick in and prevent those wheels from locking up. So that'll enable you to actually keep braking on a corner, which is always a no-no on a car that didn't have ABS. But now with ABS, the maximum amount of braking force can be applied. And as you turn into a corner, all of the weight goes to the outside left wheel, for example, if you were turning right. And that would result in that wheel locking up. But the ABS system could detect that and just keep the braking at the threshold point where it doesn't lock up. And you can safely maneuver round corners and round obstacles even while doing heavy braking. So in slippery conditions and on wet roads, ABS really comes into its own and it is a significant lifesaver. It can perform superhuman feats when it comes to braking control. In some conditions though, like on snow and ice, the ABS can be oversensitive. Some cars are actually fitted with a snow mode that will take into account the unusual driving conditions in that sort of environment. And it can make adjustments so you still get the maximum amount of braking you can, but it won't be over overly compensating through the slip that it encounters on those icy roads. So manual cadence braking or threshold braking is where a professional driver will pulse the brake toward the lockup point and then back off again. And that pulsing effect theoretically enables the car to maintain the maximum amount of braking force. Now it requires a great amount of skill to actually do this, to sense when the car is locking up. But even the best driver in the world is unable to make those instant calculations and do it on a wheel by wheel basis that you would get in an ABS system. So ABS systems outperform the very best drivers using cadence braking techniques. So it's certainly something that most of us take for granted, but it's an essential system there in our cars that dramatically has improved safety and handling and performance of our cars. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned and please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there.